Welcome to Bell Brothers Brewing. Engineers talking about beers. I'm Cody. I'm Curtis. And today we're doing the December beer review. So what is our beer review for December, Cody? Barrel beers. Barrel beers. Big, big barrels right here. Big barrels. Those big barrels up here. <laughs> boom, boom. Good show. We thought we would bring to you a number of different barrel-aged beers to taste today. And in different barrels. Different barrels. That's the important part, right? I'm really interested. I saw one in the list with tequila barrels. Yep. Mm -hmm. Excited. I'm excited. You know, barrels bring in such complexity to the beer themselves. Not only do you get these really cool, unique beers, but then they just add that plus one. The je ne sais quoi. What do we got, Cody? First up, we've got Avery Brewing Company's ra barrel-aged raspberry sour at 6% ABV. We've got Copper Kettle Brewing Company's Sombre Mesa Strong Pale Ale aged in tequila barrels. Yes! And we're running that one at 8.3%. You've got D Profer Brewery, Low Christ from Belgium. And I had to look directly at the board because I am not going to do that without <laughs> looking at it. Is that a Low Christ and a High Christ? That's, that's a trinity. Low Christ, High Christ, and Middle Christ. <laughs> and the name of that one is Zwart Black Star. This is an old ale with star anise aged on wood and Britannomyces yeast. It's an 8% ABV. 5050 Brewings Old Dog Cognac Barrel Aged Wheat Wine Ale. And Co this Wheaton? Wheel Wheaton. <laughs> wheat Wine. And this guy is bringing in it to the party at 10%. What's up? Logsdon Farmhouse Ales Natural Selection Oak Fermented Tart Saison at 8.3%. You're a tart Saison. You're a tart. <laughs> Some watery tart gave me a Saison. <laughs> <laughs> Well, hopefully it's not watery. At 8.3%, it better not be watery. <laughs> New Holland Brewing Company is bringing us an 11% Dragon's Milk Reserve. Bourbon barrel aged stout with vanilla and chai spices. Cody, you tried to spot chai spice stout at one point. How'd that turn out? Not well. <laughs> We've got Odell Brewing Company, the Barreled Treasure Imperial Stout with chocolate and coconut at 11%, but of a sparrow flies a coconut across the ocean. <laughs> Is this an unladen sparrow or a laden sparrow? <laughs> Curry Artisan Ales is bringing us bomb imperial stout aged with coffee, cacao nibs, vanilla beans, and chili peppers at 12%. Chili peppers? Really? You had to get a chili I made one. I made one mistake on this one. I did not read the label fully. The guy at the store was just like, here's a barrel-aged one, and handed it to me. And I was like, okay, and just threw it in the box without reading it. We've got the list. You understand what's going on. You've seen it before. Let's get into the beer. Three, two, one, go. Hmm. Much lighter than I was expecting yeah, to see in a barrel -aged. Mmm. Mm. Oh man. That you can smell that barrel on top of that guy. Mm hmm That's some slight honey notes almost. You're right. Yeah. Man, the sweetness on that is impeccable. Mm -hmm. Really brings in some interesting flavors. I'm having a hard time. We're watching the board down below the video camera right now because yep. I'm trying to figure out which Reading one of these is that, yeah, yeah, right. Which one of these is gonna play inside of that? I'm gonna kick your butt. Kick your butt. Ready? Yep. Three. Two, one. Curtis has it, 50-50. 50% y'all. Damn. Ugh. Wheat wine. Wheat. Yeah, it didn't <laughs> seem strong enough to me to be the wheat wine. It doesn't, oh, yeah? at 10%, I was expecting some alcohol. No, I agree. And it is super smooth. They have hidden the alcohol in this incredibly well. It mm -hmm. is incredibly smooth, no problem on that. What gave it away though was, I was looking at, I'm going, okay, did you go copper kettle? Yeah, sombre yeah. mesa. Okay, those were the, the two I was way. between. Yeah, and I was like, there's just not enough alcohol. It's bite. not a stout, right? No, obviously, yeah, clearly. <laughs> it's not so a stout, it, and it's not a sour because the two yeah. other ones that could be lighter are both sours. Mm -hmm. And so I was jumping between, yeah, possibly the sombre mesa and the fifty fifty. The thing that killed me, the really what set it home, was that I couldn't taste the tequila barrel on mm -hmm. this. And tequila, I mean, 
everybody, if you've tasted tequila, you know tequila. There's yeah. a unique flavor to that. And I'm like, mm, I'm not picking that up. Cognac has a sweetness to it. It's yeah. kind of a honey ass kind of kind of aspect to it. Yep. And I'm like, mm, if I was gonna put this, cognac seems well. And the pairing, I think, with the wheat wine, an excellent well. idea. Yeah. An excellent. It was a idea. very good beer. On that note, let's go to the beer. Ten. Oh, this is a fucking good beer. Yeah. I, I can't. I can't. I, I have no fault yeah. on this. I like drinking this beer. There's, I agree with him. I would give this a ten. This is a damn good beer. Yeah, it's a phenomenal is, beer. <laughs> yeah, it is smooth. It's got a l- good flavor, but yeah. not so much flavor that you can't just keep going back mm-hmm. to it. Um, like they, it's a ten percent beer, and you, like I said, I tell. didn't know. You I sipped all. it and was just like, oh, no, this is smooth. It's yeah. got a nice flavor. It's got a good feel. It's a crazy beer. This is a good stuff right here. Go. Another Ooh. light one. A light one. So we're not in the stout range again. I believe we're in the Whoa. sour range. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Mm. Whoa, that is that is super difficult the flavor, not as punchy as the aroma. The aroma is mm-hmm. super strong on that aspect of it. Mm. That being said, I'm not getting a ton of sour, so I'm thinking we might not be in the sour range. It's got a tangy smell. And the fact that it's not sour leads me to a specific decision here. That is 30 seconds. I think I know where I'm going. I'm going to be wrong on this one. Damn it. Ready? Yeah. Three, two, one, go. You're all correct. It is sobre. That's an O, Cody. Sobre means that copper kettles. It, it is sobre? It is sobre. It is sobre. That, that right. tang is now, the tequila. Before we get into too much of this, shame. Shame, shame, shame. I cannot pick up. That's not tequila barrel by any, like... We had one for my birthday that had tequila barrel on it, and that you could taste the tequila so much better. I than think this the one. other important notes is that there are lime and sea salt. Yes, in this one, and that's the notes that I'm tasting strongly. Agave and lime. Agave, agave and, lime. and lime. There you go. And it is. I, I, I can agree. taste the agave and I can yeah. taste the lime. It it wants to sing margarita, mm-hmm. but it ain't because it doesn't have that tequila tang to it. I don't. I I just don't I taste it. I get it a little bit. I think the answer here is they used a less aged tequila barrel. Like they didn't mm-hmm. use like a Reposado right. tequila barrel, which if you had, that would have that really strong dark tequila note or an Anejo. Yeah. Like those would have really Something pushed that. Push this is the... probably one of those like light, easier, bold <laughs> tequilas. Like right. Not even cheap-y. a very, yeah. They may have used a cheap barrel here. All right. Uh, that would make more sense if you used a cheap barrel. Something where it was like, yeah, tequila technically was aged in it for, you know, less than a year kind of deal. So with that, let's go to the beer. Because I don't get a lot of barrel notes, and this is a barrel-aged beer review, I'm going to have to go like six or seven kind of range. I think it's a good beer. It's a very good beer. I like it's it. It's very drinkable. The Corona with Lime works for a reason. I'm going to give this one a four because for a barrel aids aspect, I need more barrel. One, go. We got another light. Wow. Another bright, shiny light. Mmm. Mm. That that gives me some flavors. Some. Yep. Mmm. Aromatics on that one. Mmm. Ooh. Now, mm. the question is, when they say sour, do they mean kettle sour? Or do they mean like wild fermentation sour? <laughs> this one tastes more like a mixed fermentation. This one tastes like it had the time to really develop. I agree. Did you Sorry. take a long dog? Yeah, it was. <laughs> Let's go to the beer. I'm gonna go eight. I like this one. Really? Quite a bit. Yeah, I like this mm. one quite a bit. Um, you can taste the arc. The arc. Oak. <laughs> got strong beers. Two in it. I'm already struggling to pronounce words. We got the oak. Um, it tastes clear and nice to me. Mm-hmm. I can, you know, the vanilla woody notes of the oak come through, and you got a nice bit of tart and some funk. I, I agree on all aspects of that. Mm-hmm. Except for the fact that when I say saison, there's mm-hmm. a certain flavor profile of that spicy kind of piece to it that I think they call it right farmhouse ales, and then they named it a saison, and and maybe they use some aspects for that, but I'm getting more horse blanket, which pushes me into the Brett aspect. Yes, I think they should have just called it a farmhouse. You did not score. It. Oh, I, score I, I haven't scored it yet. Uh, Again, I'm going to disagree with the Saison title on that one, and I'm going to give it a six. It's a good beer. It's got enough funk that I think it does lean more into a true farmhouse ale versus a Saison. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't have funk in a Saison. Right. But this one is really, it feels like it's centered on the funk. 
Yes. Like the funkiness is a like, core part of this beer. It's funky, it's oaky, it's a little tart. The funk though is good funk. It mm -hmm. hasn't gone to oh, that over no. funky note. Like no. this is a good level of funky. Now, if you don't like funky beers, you don't, don't hate this. Yeah, don't don't, don't drink it. <laughs> if you're not into funky beers, don't do it. Right. You're going to have a bad time. Mm -hmm. But if you enjoy funk or you even have sort of a taste for the funk, This is a good one because it's got enough funk to be tasty, but not so funky that it completely takes over. It's It's got a funky core, and then you got a layer of tart, and then you got a layer of the oak. Three, two, one, go. That's hey, black. it's finally a stout. What's <laughs> we up? We got <laughs> Ooh, man. Mm. Uh, mm, I think I know where I'm going just <laughs> off the smell here. Yeah, I'm thinking we know where we're going. Yep, it's um familiar. Oh, hold on, maybe. The flavor goes in a different direction. Yeah, I think mm. I know where I'm going here. At first I smelled a note that put me to a different thing, oh, but yeah. then that went away once I tasted it. Oh yeah. That's 30. Flip them. Yeah, buddy, that is dragon's mouth. <laughs> right. Yeah. I yeah. think I know a dragon. Mm. <laughs> nice. Not a very good dragon, but no, I know a dragon. dragon. <laughs> Looks more like a Chicken butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously you can pick it up in the smell. Personally, I mm -hmm. picked it up. I went chai spice because uh, I drank enough of your chai stout that one <laughs> time to make up the difference. The thing that got me is the chai spice has a hint of a vegetal note. Mm -hmm. And that was making me lean a little bit to the chili pepper. Mm -hmm. And then I took the sip and went, there's no, no spice way. in this at all. Yeah. Like it's not hot in the slightest. Mm -hmm. And so I went more for the... Chai spice. But I, I won't fault you for that because, like, it does have a little bit of a chocolate aroma to it. It definitely has vanilla bean to it, right? Mm -hmm. And obviously, Dragon's Milk has that vanilla bean to it, right? So the only yeah. difference is, honestly, the chai spice that they're putting the on The chai top. spice. And the chai spice, to me, really does give a slight vegetal note mm -hmm. in the aroma, which made me lean chili pepper at right. first. And then I took that sip and went, no, there's no chili there's in no this. There's no heat. Yeah. This has to be Dragon's Milk. The right? one that pulled me away from that, no coffee. I that definitely, too. and if they no say chili, coffee, no coffee, it better be some coffee in there. I'm going to be really pissed otherwise. But, but it better not be that other one. The no. New oh, man. Yeah, that you maple, want that, that maple coffee, coffee Ooh, nastiness. No, <laughs> no, no, no. Go back to the drawing board. Anyways, so on that one, I'm really enjoying the complexities of the stout itself. It's a deep, roasty kind of, it's not burnt. It's not charcoal. The roast really kind of sinks there. You're really bringing in some like that, that meat, that earth, that deep tone to it. On that note, let's go to the beer. What do you got? Man, that's a hard one. Four barrel aged? How much of the barrel are you picking up though? Like everything I just denoted was for the stout itself. I think the thing here is that the barrel incorporates really well mm -hmm. with the other flavors. And so mm -hmm. it doesn't stand out on its own and say, here's the barrel and then here's everything uh, else. It is yeah. barrel and flavors all kind of come the mix together aspect. into one note. So I, I agree with you. I think I understand that. I'm going to give it then a seven. I'm going to go eight. You're right. This is smooth. It's flavorful. Mm -hmm. It's an 11% beer and you can feel the warming, but there's no strong alcohol tang. Mm -hmm. It's got a good body. Right. It's nice. It's creamy. Um, I almost wish they did. Is this nitro? Uh, no, this is oh. not nitro. I wish they did these on nitro. Yeah, right. Because <laughs> uh, if they did these on nitro, I think you'd have a really... Nice beer here. I think that's an untapped market from New Holland. All right, three, two, one, go. Stout, another dark one. <clears throat> this one requires really more sniffing. You all right? <laughs> that. All right, so we talked about the key pillars of Bell Brothers and the whole two complex. I take that statement back. This is too complex. There's way too much going on here. That's 30. Mm. Oh. I, I, holy crap. Uh, mm. <laughs> uh, so who do I put on, on the spit, on the post? <laughs> <laughs> wants to get the, the shaft. All right, ready? This beer has problems. You can talk about it in a minute, but Borg. 
Uh, I believe bomb is the prairie on Sunail's one, correct? So, yes, you both got this. Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, Did you think it was that bad? No, it was... Really? Uh, it is overly complex. Way I think too much. That's, it's way too much. That's what gave this one away is I was like, okay, which one has the most modifiers added to the beer? That you get, you, unfortunately, you don't get any capsaicin out of the chili pepper. Mm -mm. You get pure vegetal. Pure mm -hmm. vegetal. So then you get these like cocoa nibs that are trying to play with the roast aspect of it. And the sweetness from it the is vanilla is, is too much. Pretty sweet. It is not, oh, it's not as sweet as New Image. No. Maple. No. But it is a fairly sweet beer. It's sweet. It's chocolatey. It's vanilla-y. It's not chili. Like, yeah. I don't love chili beers, and there's not really much, like you said, it's the vegetal note of the chili is all you're getting. And the coffee is kind of lost somehow. Like, somehow they lost a flavor as strong as coffee. So, and I don't even taste the barrel. Uh, so let's go to the beer. What do you got? Three? I agree with that. Three. <laughs> um, it's just, there's a lot going on here. It doesn't really deliver on all the different flavors. No. This is the first one. I mean, it is the strongest, but this is the first one where there's a clear alcohol flavor and yeah. burn to it. Yeah, it's got, it's got, fun or not phenolic, um, fusel, fusel mm -hmm. alcohols. There's too much going on, and of all the things it tells tells you it has, it doesn't deliver no. on all of them. Prairie Artisan, go back to the drawing board. Uh, maybe maybe take drop, some things off the drawing yeah, board. Like, <laughs> drop two, like go, go with a two modifier beer. When you're going to right. four modifiers, it might be too much. Like vanilla and cocoa mix well together. Yep. I could even see coffee and chili. I could understand coffee that. Coffee and cocoa, coffee and vanilla. That right. works. Like pick two of the four. Yeah. You don't <laughs> right. need all four modifiers going on here. There's just a little too much going on. I think you got to back it off some. And the sweetness. And the sweetness. And it the is sweetness a little is oversweet. Overpowering. Three, two, yep. one. Do you want to tell me what that Reasonable is? Reasonable clarity. Yep. Smell. You can smell it from a mile out. I, but it could go to one of two ways though. We still have two that would match, right? No. No? Nope. This is the only sour left. We already did the uh, Logston farmhouse sales. Yeah. The, yeah. There's two sours. Yeah, there's two sours. We already used one. No, there are three sours. Where's the third sour? To prof. That's, That's a bread, seconds. not a sour. That's 30 seconds. <laughs> bread is not necessarily sour, <laughs> you dingus. <laughs> And flip them. Yeah, <laughs> that is the raspberry sour. Well, with that, let's go to the beer. Uh, for a barrel aged, I'm gonna have to go four and a half. Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go. It's enjoyable. A three or four, yeah. It's enjoyable beer. I like it, I like the raspberry, I like the sour. Right. I don't taste barrel at all. Not at all. No, I, I think this tastes like a clean. This tastes like a kettle soured raspberry. So I think the big things here are it is not particularly barrel flavored. No, it does have a good raspberry note, but it tastes like a kettle soured raspberry. So yeah, it tastes kettle soured. You don't have that it's a cheap sour complexity of the sour note. It oh, is yeah. just that clean yogurt like sour. Mm -hmm. I think this kettle sour is too strong with the raspberry, and I I miss the barrel. I guess as someone who likes sour, I don't mind it because it's nice and sour. All right. It's got that good tang, gives you a little... <laughs> but I agree, they're, whatever barrel they use, based off the um, the can, it's probably a fresh oak barrel fresh or something oak. along those lines. That's a, and that's so delicate. It's Why a delicate flavor, so and so it's delicate. just completely destroyed by the yeah. high-octane, sour, tart, raspberry notes that you not, got going on. Not okay. Not okay. Yeah. Which is why it gets a low score. It is not that, if we were drinking sour beers, I would give this one a higher score because it is a decent yeah, as a sour, plain sour, kettle soured beer. It's a decent kettle sour, would probably be a seven. As a barrel a aged, note. it's not okay. Three, two, one, go. Another light, <laughs> lightish one. Oh man, that smells delicious across. Yeah, it does. Oh my God, that smells delicious. <laughs> Comparatively, oh. Uh -huh. Taste, less so, not horrible. I think I know where I'm going with this one though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What one, because we only have one non-stout left. Yeah, but. That's it? I was expecting more. Yeah, flip it. I had to think about which one it was. Yes, it is this marked. Not good. Shame, 
Shame, shame. All the pump up of the star an star anise and the licorice flavors and mm -hmm. no. Yeah, I was based off what the guy at Coltrane told me. Yeah. He was like, it's really front and center on that licorice note. No. Maybe it's because we're drunk. Mm -mm. But I just no. I don't feel a strong licorice note. I smell, I taste the bread. And the old ale. And I taste the old ale. Yeah. I taste a little bit of wood. Yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was expecting more licorice notes, and I'm not getting them. No. And I think that comes from our experience with your lasagna. With that, let's go to the beer. Um, other than not tasting like star anise, yeah, six. It's drinkable, it's smooth. I can taste the wood age. But again, this is a barrel age aspect yeah. of it, right? I can taste the wood, I can taste the oak. I, I agree, I think there's a woodiness. The bread helps to amplify that, the old ale aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give it an eight. That high, really? That, yeah, that high. I, I think I would grade it higher because it is enjoyable mm -hmm. if it delivered on the licorice note. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, if I was purely grading it to what it sold me as, versus what I'm tasting, I would like I would grade it lower. That's but the thing is I, never, I always have to include what they tell me there is. Mm -hmm. If you tell me it's there, right. I want to taste it. I, and and in and that if case, I can't the taste it, is not there. Then I'm gonna I'm gonna yeah. knock it on not tasting that note. <laughs> if you tell me it's there, I expect it to be there. <laughs> and if you lied to me, I'm going to hurt you for it. <laughs> uh, right. This one, it's the complexities aren't there. It is, it is really nice that it's more of a single tone. It's a smooth, it's got decent flavor. You can taste the wood. I'm not tasting anything else, so I think it's a unused, it's a fresh barrel. Yeah. Tastes like a fresh barrel. You can taste the old ale a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can taste the woody, slightly leathery notes of the, the bread. bread. Yeah. You don't taste the star anise too no. much, um, which is a little disappointing. I think yeah. actually the star anise could w mix in well here. You think so? I think it it's could. More, just more, a little more. more of it would really, mm. it would give it an interesting note. It's got just enough sweetness, I think, to make the star anise pop. It could. I mean, I can't say without tasting it, which is why we do experiments the way mm -hmm. we do. I think the hard part here is that not a lot of people like licorice, and the mm. star anise would give you that black licorice note. It would note, definitely so it would polarize. Be, it would be a very polarizing beer. Because we know this one's going to be Odell Brewing Company's Barreled treasure. Now, no, okay, so here's the question before you go. Mm -hmm. Do you think they used real coconut or extract? I will find out in a second. Well, no, I want you to oh. guess. I'm going to go extract because yeah. real coconut is very rare. And expensive. And expensive. Odell, you Odell is a mass market. You're going right? to have to tell me. Now, I would say if we were as big as Odell, I would force you to use real coconut no matter the cost because I because know the, the flavor, flavor difference is, is unparalleled. It's unparalleled. Right, but I would think that the capitalistic mm. run of Odell might go more of the extract aromatically. Aspect. It may not be extract because it's not punchy coconut. Aromatic, like coconut extract, usually is just this massive, like look how coconutty I am in the smell. That face tells me it might be extract, though. You you take a taste. You tell me if you disagree. I'm feeling chemical. Yeah, I think that uh, might be an extract coconut. Yeah. Uh, Fred over at Smiling Toad had, did a roasted coconut mm. chocolate beer stout, and it was phenomenal. Yeah. Right? I mean, we we drank the crap out of that day. You could tell the roasted coconut was in there. You can tell real. All right, I don't care what you have to say, but you can tell real versus extract. Now, you can hide extract really well. I think a mm -hmm. lot of companies, a lot of beer brewers do well at hiding extract. But when you bring in that real flavor, it's unmistakable. Yeah. There's, and I think the big thing is the creaminess, that real coconut. Because you got a little bit of the fat in a mm -hmm. toasted coconut mm -hmm. and the caramelization of a toasted coconut. Oh. And this doesn't say toasted. No. But nobody eats raw coconut. No. Like, it's not no, good. Not in general. You, you use toasted coconut. And the toasted coconut caramelization and a little bit of fattiness just adds a certain creamy feel. Mm -hmm. This doesn't have it. Mm -mm. This has a chemical coconut and a strong dark chocolate note. I usually pick that up, like the chemical flavor is like on the back of the palate, kind mm -hmm. of the sides, where you're like, it sticks around. Real coconut, it comes in and you're like, ooh, that's amazing, and yeah, then it goes away. And it, yeah, it fades. And when it fades, you immediately are like, oh, I gotta drink more. And you go back and you hit it again. And I think that's the biggest difference. 
is not only do you get a good flavor out of it, but then it draws more drinkability out of it. Yeah. And I think this one used a artificial coconut, a real chocolate, it gives me a real dark chocolate vibe, and a... Probably cocoa nibs. Nah, I don't know if it's got quite the cocoa nib. There's a certain tang to a cocoa nib. Yeah. I think this was a dark chocolate powder. So let's go to the beer. What do you got? I mean, you can taste the barrel across mm -hmm. the board. So for barrel aging, I've got to give it the score of seven. The beer itself, because of the chemical coconut, is more like a three or a four. So I think I give it the average of five. <laughs> because it is barrel aged, and that is clear. But it's not a great beer by itself. No. It's no. You got the chemical coconut. The chocolate is a little bitter, mm -hmm. like to the overly bitter, and you've got a residual sweetness and the overly bitter chocolate, and then the bitterness that comes with the chemical extract coconut. flavor. Yeah. And so it's just kind of leaning into sugared broccoli. All right. The producer is now going back and going to give us a mix of two or more of the previous beers to get us a guess so that we can tie break what's going on. Doing a very complex tiebreaker. <laughs> That's going to be a rough one. In three, two, one, good. All right, we got a dark one. There's at least one stout. <laughs> at least. Probably two. This, this smells, mm, picking up a flavor. Aroma. Mm. I know one. Question is, what's the second? You guys are thinking too hard about this. Dang, Cody's ballsy. We're only just now hitting 30 seconds. I'm probably going to be wrong, but I think I got it. All right, let's do this. Flip it. So you're both saying dragon's milk plus the 50-50? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, is that you're... we're both right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it tastes like to me. Yeah, right? Well, you're both 50% right. Yeah, the 50-50 is dead on. I don't know which stout it mixed with. It tastes like dragon's milk. I thought that might so be well. the 50 50, the cognac barrel really just taking over yeah, with it the does. sweetness. I mean, like, the 50 50 shines it through. The honey and yeah. the cognac, but <laughs> there was no doubt in my mind 50 50 was in there. Yep. And go. All right, we got another dark one. Ooh. Aromatics are good. Yeah. Liking that. Oh. The flavor didn't like mix the quite so well. Um, <laughs> mm, mm. I think I know the stout it's, that it's, went into this. Yeah, I think I agree with you. That's I'm going three. to flavor. I think we got this one. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and flip them. So you're both fifty percent right again. Really. <laughs> So, I tasted, <laughs> I tasted this one. I tasted prairie because I got the, I thought I got cocoa nibs and vanilla bean and maybe a hint of vegetal. Really? And then I thought there was a hint of star anise in there. So maybe it was zwart. No, I agree with you. I, I could have gone zwart here, but I think sombre is the other way. But there was a dark one in there. So if you did sombre plus zwart, that would have been too lighter. Uh, the old ale was darker. Look no, at it. Wasn't. Look, it, it's a little bit dark. Uh, it, this is a light and a dark mixed. Yeah, that's why I went prairie and zwart because prairie was a stout and zwart was it was darker than sombre and the sour. And I could I could give you the zwart. It, it had I, a hint maybe of star anise, but I'm not sure. No, because we don't pick up any of the licorice in there, and I'm not. Uh, it must be prairie and <laughs> copper. Prairie. All right. Three, two, one, go. All right. Ooh. It's light, so there's no stouts no involved. No stouts. <laughs> what do you know? It's tangy. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah, with the, the, the triple wet. Oh. Oh. Wow, that's that's a rough one to put down. Mm -hmm. Um. Although with triple, it really points itself to like one of four or three of four, right? We yeah. have three of four in the choice. Flip. Aha! 
also, funnily enough, you both got this one. <laughs> I was thinking that was what was going to happen. Like, this is, I'm pretty sure. Sombre, Sabre, Avery, Avery logs. and logs on. So I guess we go into quadruple overtime. Nope, nope. <laughs> nope. We're just going to call this one a tie. The Bell Brothers are equally knowledgeable at this point in time. I hope you've enjoyed this. Make sure you like and subscribe. Head on over to our YouTube channel if you're not there. Hit that like button. Share our videos on Facebook. We appreciate your input. We need more viewers, and we would very much enjoy it. This has been Bell Brothers Brewing. This has been Bell Brothers Brewing. Drunk engineers talking about beers. Cheers. <laughs>Bell Brothers Brewing, engineer. Man, just, that was went right over all day. Right. Like, Let's get he, he did it on the exit too. He just ran right over the two doubles set on that one. If you want to start it, you just got to stop before you get there. <laughs> so first up, we've got Avery Brewing Company's Barrel Aged Raspberry Sour. That's at six percent ABV. Well, that seems kind of weak. Say it again without looking down at the board. <laughs> so first up, we've got. Nope, look right down at the board again. Yes, you did. <laughs> Yep, uh, you got low Christ and high Christ. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's an untapped market from New Belgium. Uh, New Holland. As, New Holland. Oh, sorry. God damn it. Sorry. They're in the same place. <laughs> New Holland. I think that's an untapped market. I think yeah. the smooth, kind of buttery mouth feel that you can yeah, bring it's in. It's just a nice mouth, mouth, mouth feel. There's a nice mouth feel. <laughs> How many beers in are you? All right. Three. Three. But these if, are if I can count. Oh, nope, can't count anymore. Nope, either. can't count either. All right, there we go. Two using Agreed. nitro. Mm -hmm. uh, Got to go a little Shatner there so I can enunciate properly between words. <laughs> uh.